But when it comes to the college football playoff, when it comes to games of this nature where there's some hardware on the line, it's funny because a lot of times those games lend themselves to an X factor of sorts. Like it might not be the star player that ends up making the play to win the game. Maybe it will be, but I think a lot of times it's that guy that was the number two receiver or was, you know, the, uh, the other option for the quarterback on that play or the other facet we didn't talk about as much going into the game. So these are, I think, the X factors for us to all be ahead of the game when it comes to each of these college football playoff teams. I want to just kind of unpack it one by one. Bama, Michigan, Texas, and Washington all one at a time, and we'll tell you the X factor that will have a massive impact on their college football playoff national title aspirations. And where I want to start is in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, with the four seed with uh, Nick Saban and company. The X factor for them is Isaiah Bond and Jermaine Burton, their wide receiver core. To me, those two individuals, they hold the keys to unlocking the most potential of this offense. Because when you look at the games where Alabama has really been able to kind of find a rhythm offensively, it's been games where both those dudes have been rolling. So whenever they're able to stretch the field and win their matchups, it does two things. One, it adds that explosive element to the offense, right? I mean, look at this. Uh, Isaiah Bond had 15 yards per catch against Georgia. Obviously, they won that football game, and Jalen Milrow did a lot of things with his legs. Uh, Jermaine Burton and Isaiah Bond combined for 20 yards of reception against Tennessee. That was a game where we really kind of saw this Alabama offense sort of find a little bit more life. That obviously led to an explosion against LSU. Against LSU, they combined for over 10 yards of reception. That's still a pretty sizable number. So whenever you have the explosive element there, it also, the second part of this, is it provides less attention on Jalen Milrow. Because for Jalen Milrow, man, like we understand this. Whenever he gets out and he ad-libs a little bit, whenever he breaks contain, if you're a linebacker, maybe you have a chance at catching him. If you're spying and doing your job, if you're Harold Perkins, maybe you have a chance of catching him. But to be honest with you, a lot of times, the guys that have to make that tackle are coming from the third level. Well, if I'm in that third level, and Isaiah Bonds beat me a time or two, and he's got, a, you know, let's say 40 yards receiving, and we're in the second quarter, I may be a little bit more slow to peel off of him and go try and attack Jalen Milrow because I don't want to get beat deep and give up the big play. So at that point, the number one thing for Alabama happens. They provide conflict for a defense. And it all starts, again, with Jermaine Burton and Isaiah Bond being able to catch their tempo, stretch the defense, kind of make them cover the entirety of the field, and good things are happening for Bama. That'll be crucial whenever they play Michigan. Now, speaking of Michigan, let's talk about their X factor. A lot made about them getting downhill and running the football. A lot made about the defense. Those are all important things. But I think the X factor for Michigan is J.J. McCarthy's legs for a couple of reasons. Like, we just talked about it. We know what Michigan's fastball is. We, we know what it is. It's Blake Corum downhill. It's Donovan Edwards running the power. That's who they are. That big offensive line going north and south. Now, how, do, how many of y'all know, like, a good pitcher or a good batter, rather, knows how to account for your fastball. A good, a good defensive coordinator, which Kevin Steele is for Alabama, is going to make sure that that is the first priority of stopping against Michigan. Now, can they do it? Whole other conversation. But I think in a game like this, you need to have the changeup ready. And the changeup, just like I said to me, is J.J. McCarthy's ability to be mobile. There's a couple of ways this looks. The first is the read option. How many times have we seen that defensive end collapse? Like, dang, tackle for a loss. They got Blake Corum. Nope, J.J. McCarthy tucks it, gets around the edge, creates some space for himself. First down, it was third and six. He got seven. Good times are rolling for the Wolverines. That's one part of it. Whenever you focus so much on that backfield and you lose track of number nine, he's still a guy that runs like a 4 or 5 40. He's still got some ability to get out around the edge and make you pay. That's the first part. Now, the other part, and this might be more critical in this game against Alabama, is his ability to get out in space when that play breaks down and, as Joel Klatt says, go above the X's and O's. I think that's a very real possibility here in this game against Alabama for a couple of reasons. The first of which being they're going to try and provide some pressure to get after J.J. McCarthy. Like that shot clock might be sped up a little bit if you're number nine. The other part of this is Alabama, they play a ton of man coverage. And so whenever you're playing man coverage, it is a lot easier to stick on your man for two to three seconds. It's a lot more difficult to do it for four to five. And whenever I break contain, if I'm J.J. McCarthy, I got my eyes downfield, new play. 
new play. And you might have covered me for the first part of that play if I'm Colston Loveland, but to stick with me for five seconds, like, hey, listen, we're all elite athletes on the field here. We all got recruited to these top institutions for a reason here. And we saw this against Ohio State. This was a big factor. J.J. McCarthy playing backyard football, running right, throwing left, getting a first down, and that was how they made their money a lot on third down. That could be a big factor in this Rose Bowl. So what he's able to do with his legs and add that extra element to the offense that you just can't account for, that's going to be a very, very big part of what happens in this Rose Bowl. Also worth noting, when it comes to those design quarterback runs, a little jet sweep motion across the formation. Let's say J.J. McCarthy tucks it, a la Peyton Thorne. Bama's had a little bit of trouble defending the mobile quarterbacks. Like Jarquez Hunter got rolling, it's kind of, you know, chicken or the egg situation, but Jarquez Hunter got rolling in a lot of ways because of the concern for Peyton Thorne tucking it and running. And then Peyton Thorne was able to tuck it and run because of the concern for Jarquez Hunter with him catching rhythm. So that's something to watch for, the rhythm that J.J. McCarthy is able to get running the football and how Alabama defends that. Going to be big, going to be very big. Now let's move to the Sugar Bowl here and talk about this a little bit. Texas and Washington, the big X factor for me for Texas is Jatavian Sanders, the tight end for them. And Jatavian Sanders is the reason why I don't think anybody in this college football playoff is going to be able to just flat out stop Texas offensively. I didn't say that Texas is going to win the national championship and go undefeated these next two games. That's possible, but I just think offensively, Texas will not be stopped because of what he presents from a matchup perspective for these teams in this playoff scenario. Because Jatavian Sanders, I'm going to say a bold statement, but I 100% agree with it. Jatavian Sanders is the best tight end in college football not named Brock Bowers. He is six foot four, 243 pounds. He can line up anywhere. The only way to stop him is to bring a safety over the top and play someone underneath him, essentially double coverage. They call that bracketing. But whenever you do that, what do you do with that safety? You take him away from giving safety help to your corner to help out against Xavier Worthy, to help out against Adonai Mitchell. And so even if he doesn't pop for a big day in the box score, it's going to be a very, very critical part of a defensive strategy to make sure that you account for him accordingly and then also account for Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy on the perimeter. So the, just the matchup issue he gives you, the numbers that you can account for with number zero and what he presents from a size perspective, from an agility perspective, like he is a matchup nightmare and I think he causes a lot of issues from a resources perspective for your defense. Whether it's Washington, whether it's Michigan or Bama, I think that'll be a problem because of how dynamic this Texas offense can be and because of how tough of a matchup Jatavian Sanders ends up being. Now let's keep on rolling here. Let's take a look at Washington. Washington, man, I said it every single time we talk about them. They're not TCU. Big reason why they're not TCU because they got that dog in them. And that dog for me is Dylan Johnson. Like he is a tone setter for this offense. And to me, he allows them to be good enough and dynamic enough to play smash mouth style of offense up front. He makes them really multiple. We know they can throw the football downfield. We know Roma Dunes is going to make a ton of money in the NFL. We know Michael Penix Jr. is good for like one or two bow and arrow celebrations a game. Like that's just what they do. That's how they make their money. But if we can also run the football with Dylan Johnson, in addition to that, being multiple is the scariest thing you can be in a two-game season like this. Because at that point, we don't know how to defend you for any of these teams. And Dylan Johnson, he is big in the big spots. Against ranked teams this season, he's averaging six yards a carry. When we need number seven to make plays for us and get downhill and run behind his pads, he's done it, and he's done it consistently. He's done it effectively. So that's going to be a big part of what they do, especially against Texas, because we said it in a previous video, or previous live show rather, that game may very well come down to who can change pace and shift gears the best. Because I think it's going to be high scoring. It might come down to that fourth quarter drive where you just got to hold on to the ball for three minutes. Can you take three minutes off the clock by pounding the rock? I think the offensive line for Washington is good enough, and I think Dylan Johnson, how physical he runs, I think he's good enough too. People forget now, man, Dylan Johnson, a guy that came to Washington by way of the portal from the SEC, playing ball at Mississippi State. So... That dude is no stranger to big boy football, so all you want about the Pac-12, that's fine. Washington and their physicality uh, could be a great equalizer. Dylan Johnson, the X factor for me when it comes to those college football playoff games. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.